Hello and welcome to Communication Connection. I'm your host, Terry Likes. Thank you so much for joining us. Many people may not know that Mississippi State University has an award-winning speech and debate team and now has a component similar to that in a brand new speaking center on campus. Two very exciting things that are relatively new to the campus and to join us here today to talk about that is the person at the forefront in the creation of both speech and debate and the speaking center. Instructor Cheryl Chambers in the Department of Communication. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us here on Communication Connection. Thank you for having me. Well, we mentioned speech and debate, and you were on this program a little over two years ago, pre-COVID. It seems like a long time ago now. Talking about speech and debate, you have a new title, now the director of the speech and debate program, or what some universities call a forensics team. And the team has had many accolades uh, over the years, and including since we last talked here on this program. I know you must be proud, all of us are. I'm very proud of the efforts of everyone on the team. Uh, having the new position of director has really allowed for me to take a team that has grown and do more with it. So since we first started as a team of five to seven students who we went to a couple of tournaments, we now have 25 students on the team. We travel to eight or nine tournaments a year, including national tournaments. And we have hosted a regional tournament. Soon we'll be hosting a national tournament. So we are a bigger team and there's more responsibilities that come with that. The director position has allowed me to take on more of those things to make us a, a more well-known team. As far as the team themselves, they are incredible. The students are so dedicated and they really took the challenges of the pandemic and embraced it and are more successful than ever. And of course, I can't forget the person who tends to stay hidden in the background. Their coach, Brett Harvey, is obviously so pivotal to their success. So overall, the team has just had an amazing season. Well, congratulations to you and Brett and to the team. And as we look back over your career, you are a graduate of Mississippi State University. You went away to Alabama to get your master's degree. So I know everyone is glad that you came back to your alma mater. That must be something special for you to teach and create at your alma mater. Yes, and every semester when I start my classes, one of the first things I say is that I was born and raised in Starkville, that this is my town, this is my university, and I really do feel fortunate that not only is this a job for me, but this is part of my culture, this is part of who I am, and that I'm able to share that with students, I'm able to share that with new faculty, I'm able to connect my job with my community, so it really does have so many advantages being a, a homegrown girl. Well, you mentioned all the awards of the speech and debate team, lots of state awards over the years, regional awards, national awards. You mentioned Brett Harvey, and I guess one of the more recent ones is that you were able to, and with Brett, able to pick up a second place national award competing over against over 100 teams. That's remarkable. The team has been doing excellent and we've, like I said, just been growing and this has been our best year to date. So on, of all the national teams, or over 100 teams that compete in IPDA debate, what we do, we are second in the nation and actually first in public universities. And it's so much of the effort of these students. This is completely their time and energy that doesn't necessarily lead to any money. It doesn't lead to a lot of course credit. It really is something that they are doing because they're passionate about it and they're good at it. Now, what is your role with the team? Obviously, you're the director, but tell us about how you coach the team members versus what Brett does. You both, both bring different areas of expertise. Brett, as many may not know, is a part of the legal counsel team here at the university. So certainly he brings a debate element that is critical to what you want to do. Sure. The situation we're in right now actually I think is the most ideal. Brett does have a ton of experience with debate, being a debater since high school. And like we talked about the last time I was on the program, I actually don't have any experience with speech or debate coming into this fairly new. However, what I do love to do is manage and organize. So I do coach the students in speaking skills, so speech events, and then they're working on their speaking skills in debate, whereas Brett is more responsible for helping them with their actual debating skills, running through those practices, and then prepping at the tournament. And then, of course, there's just a lot of logistics that go behind traveling, the pandemic, and online tournaments really 
created a lot of new barriers that we had to run into. And then, of course, running our own tournaments comes with a lot of responsibilities. So the director position is a way of not just connecting the students to the tournaments, but connecting those tournaments to the university and then connecting us to a lot of other universities. Well, so as if you aren't busy enough, because you normally teach several courses a semester, and then as we've just heard, all of the responsibilities overseeing the speech and debate team and the travel and the students and, and so forth, you have over several years wanted to create something new here on campus. The Writing Center has been long established and a great resource for students. And it just seemed to make perfect sense, didn't it, to create a speaking center as a counterpart? Absolutely. We have so many excellent free resources available to students, including the Writing Center, the Career Center, the Learning Center, and others. And I have felt for years that the university uh, would benefit from helping students more with their speaking skills, whether it's public speaking skills or developing some other areas. And while it's always been something that I felt would be beneficial to the university, since we see it reflected in lots of other institutions, more so now than ever, with the challenges that came from being online versus being in person, social distancing, it really has created a situation where everyone is finding that their communication skills are lacking. And so having this resource for students, graduate students, even faculty and staff, I think is something that was very much needed at the university. I'm so excited to be spearheading this project. Well, another hat for you to wear. It means you've got another director title, so a second director title along with faculty title and the speech and debate team. We saw a couple of photos there from the ribbon cutting, which was back in February of 2022. And a couple of deans were there, Dean Rick Travis of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Liz Pankel from the, the library, a brand new dean. We're glad to have her here on campus. And tell us, so what happens at the speaking center on a daily basis now that it is officially up and running? Sure. So for the most part, the Speaking Center is run by students. We have peer consultants is the title that we give them. So these are undergraduate students who are trained to help other undergraduate students with their speaking skills, with creating speeches, with developing the ideas, with performing their speeches, with practicing um, delivery and dealing with some of the stage fright that comes along with public speaking. So when a student comes to the center, they're working with someone who's their age, who has a similar situation to them, and hopefully it's a little less intimidating. So from a daily perspective, you're going to see students coming into the center and having their one-on-one -on -one individual appointments and hopefully getting some really good feedback from our peer consultants. Additionally, the Speaking Center can come to you. So myself and several of the consultants have gone to classes we have gone to student organizations and other events to try to promote what we do, but also to share some tips and some ideas with those that are present. Yeah, I was able to sit in on one of those seminars. It was virtual that you did, you and a couple of communication colleagues. And it's, you know, we kind of somewhat take it for granted. I'm used to being in front of a camera. You're used to being in front of an audience. But a lot of people, especially people who do different things on campus, are not necessarily readily accessible to be in front of a camera or comfortable in being in front of an audience. And so this is ideally not just set up for students, but it can be for faculty and alumni as well. Absolutely. We obviously are very brand new and we have set our sights mostly on undergraduates as we start the program, but we really do want to see this center turn into a place that anyone feels like they can come to to get help with speaking skills with the speech that's coming up or even with just developing skills that they might use in the future. So we hope to uh, have more graduate students, staff, faculty members, even community members come in and get assistance. Well, I know you couldn't have done this all by yourself. You had Sarah Frederick uh, kind of as your right-hand person. She works in the MSU Foundation and Development for the College of Arts and Sciences. And once the ball started rolling, it really kind of came to fruition quickly, didn't it? Yes, Sarah has been invaluable. So Sarah also works with me with speech and debate. She was the person who helped us establish our endowment. And just in a meeting, she said, what else 
do you have? What other ideas do you have? And I talked about the Speaking Center and like you said, once she heard that idea, she just got that ball rolling. I also don't want to ignore the efforts of Nikki Robinson, who works with Sarah and was just so instrumental in all of the things that we've been doing to get this center up and rolling. And we just saw a photo from the ribbon cutting from February with uh, you and the donors. So we certainly appreciate that. What were their thoughts when they were able to see the, the grand opening? We had Tom and Jean Freeman come initially when we first were developing things when the center was still fairly empty and they already were really impressed with the space obviously it's a space that they had chosen and um, they were impressed with what we were going to be doing but when they came to the ribbon cutting i really think that they were able to see the reality of it see how this was going to benefit people and that this was going to be something that they allowed the university to have because of their contributions so you've got a few months under your belt now, and you recently had a, a ribbon, not a ribbon cutting, but kind of a grand opening or open house for students to create awareness. You called it a snack and chat, and it seemed to be pretty successful. The snack and chat was so much fun. We did want to have an open house, but we knew that the speaking center itself really was gonna be a little too cramped to have a very successful open house. So the team that I was working with this, this semester, PRISM, uh, developed this idea of the snack and chat, which was held at the dog house. We had snacks and the ability to chat with our consultants. We also had a raffle, we had activities um, and some incentives. And it was really a fun opportunity for lots and lots of students to come in and learn a little bit more about what we do. And more importantly than anything, just to become aware that we exist. That was our main mission for this semester, was to increase awareness that the Speaking Center is now a resource available to students. Well, Cheryl Chambers is our guest, the director of the brand new MSU Speaking Center. So, Cheryl, we've learned a little bit more about it. How does one make an appointment or get involved? How can they get coached? If I'm a professor or a student, let's say I've got a speech or a conference presentation coming up, I'd like a little uh, skills uh, in learning how I can do a little bit more of an effective job. What's the process? We've tried to make it so easy. If you go to speakingcenter.msstate.edu, hopefully a very easy address to remember, or just type in Speaking Center in the MSU website, then you're gonna be directed to a page where you can make appointments. And it's divided between undergraduates, graduates, and faculty and staff. So everybody has an option of a way to set up an appointment. For undergraduate students, the program we use is the exact same as the Writing Center, something that so many students are already familiar with, already able to use. So we really hope that we've simplified that process for students as well. Well, Cheryl Chambers has been our guest. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us. We're very excited about all of the accomplishments of Speech and Debate and the brand new MSU Speaking Center. So we wish you all the best. Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching us here on Communication. I'm Terry Likes. We hope you'll join us next time.